that so the UN flag is the flat earth map and the flat earth map is the USGS map the difference is is that the USGS map is considered legit and just a projection but the flat earth map is considered crazy because it's considered literal and there's just way too many coincidences with this. You know, the UN flag, people say, well, you know, the UN flag, it's a good map to use for the UN flag. I was going, what are you talking about? You could have come up with dozens of other designs to, to incorporate the world better than that. In fact, why not just make a freaking globe mm. if you're, if you're going to do that? But, and, and why leave off Antarctica? If it's, if it's a massive continent that's bigger than Australia, then why, why leave it off? Why be so conspicuous about it and, and replace and, you know, the continent of Antarctica with these big spiky wreaths going around the, ounce, the, the outside like a, you know, like a Greek or Roman right. um, uh, headdress? And it just was really, really, again, it was just one of those interesting things that I threw at people, and uh, it, it, seemed to, it seemed to really grab hold of them. Today I was uh, watching a YouTube video made by BBC News, and they were interviewing a professor, Jerry Broughton, and mm -hmm. uh, the name of the video is BBC News about the Mercator projection in Google Maps. Yeah, that's, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. the Mercator map, and this guy, okay. this guy, Brother Dave is talking about, said that there was no such thing as a map made yeah. without, a, without an agenda behind it. Yeah, yeah there are no seen, accurate maps. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen documentaries on that. And you're absolutely right. There is no such thing as an accurate map right now because they're, they're, it, they're never objective. They're always subjective. There's always some sort of, sort of ulterior motive behind it. Right. Exactly. And, yes. um, well yeah, and, and for people who don't understand what I mean, uh, the map that you've seen in your classroom you know, gets pulled down over the blackboard you know, ever since we've had schools. It's called the Mercator map, and that map's 500 years old, and it, the continents are, are way off. And scientists will tell you this. They, they know full well. It's not even a, a dispute that, that the perspectives are all wrong. Um, you know, Greenland is, is way, is tiny compared to Africa, and South America is monstrous, and Europe should be way higher on the map. The, the map that they should be using is called the Gall, and that's G-A-L-L, -L, uh, Peter's map. And that map, they can't even get into schools because, uh, you know, it, it's so much tradition over so many years, they, they just won't do it. Uh, and you know, any, anyone wants to email me at msergeant23 at comcast.net, I will send you the uh, uh, a wonderful overlay that was done by uh, somebody I knew who, who has the transparent uh, Gall Peters laid over the top of the, the world map. And it's amazing. You know, the, it's, it's staggering how different it really is. And that's just perspectives. That's not even the actual shape. They won't even show you, they won't even show you exactly how big the countries are, let alone the shape of the world. That's so. right. Go ahead with the next clue, brother. Oh, yeah, yeah. So the uh, next clue was Shell Beach. Uh, this, is a, this is a fairly quick one, and that was kind of going over uh, perspectives, and that was media, uh, which was, in fact, I'm going to be doing a show um, later this weekend that covers the media stuff, which is there's been several movies, like what, like what you're saying. You know, they'll, they'll hide things in plain sight, and they will tell you through pre predictive programming what the world is really like. And there's been quite a few movies over the years. Yeah, like they did 9-11 with the Long Gunman series. Th there you go. Yep, 9-11 done years in advance uh, before that ever happened. Uh, this stuff goes about 20 years back, roughly. You know, it's a little, 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 little less, but, but not much. And I went over um, perspectives, meaning is it so hard to believe? And if you look at some of the movies, you know, I looked at Dark City and I won't really go into that one too much, but I, um, we'll go into the Truman Show. And that is, look, if you built a Hollywood soundstage that was 20 miles wide and you had a kid raised in it, a child raised inside this thing, could you fool them into thinking that was the real world? And I, you know, I showed fairly easily that, yeah, yeah, you can, you can do that because children want to believe children do not automatically think they're being lied to right. you know they they believe their parents they believe their teachers they believe their government and again that's why we believe it's a globe now you that's put right. a globe in our classroom why would we ever think it's a lie mm -hmm. we, we wouldn't uh, and so what i was trying to do uh when i got to when i got to shell beach was i showed people it's like look if you made if you had the ability to make um an enclosed structure bigger than the, than the Truman Show, 100 miles wide, 1,000 miles wide. How many people could you fit in it, and how many people could you fool as long as you kept them away from the edges? 
And really, once you got to that point, uh, it was easy. It was, uh, it, was, it, was, it was not hard at all because of our willingness to trust people. Mm-hmm. We, we, we believe the system and we're in because we are told what it is. Look, NASA told you it was a globe. NASA showed you the picture. And, and I had somebody who came on a show um, I was doing a couple months ago where they said, uh, you know, they said, well, you know, I trust NASA. And I say, well, because NASA would never, ever lie to you. The government would never, ever lie to you ever in a million years. And, you know, they had to stop and pause because they know full well. You know, it's funny because we believe governments, but we don't believe individual politicians. Yeah. You know, we, we all have our we, we look at politicians, uh, you know, in even a less light than uh, than a used car salesman. But yet we believe our government would never, ever deceive us. And I go, no, they would deceive you if they thought it was for the greater good. And they tend to, uh, you know, fudge that uh, quite a bit. And, you know, the, what they determine to be the greater good and what you determine, eh, it's, it's, there's a little bit of a difference there. Yeah, and especially add on to that if they have an agenda. Exactly, exactly. Um, status quo, which was uh, number five, the, what I got into there was, and, and I'm, I'm kind of skimming over some of the stuff. Cause sure, like, that's fine. I, I want people to watch the clues. The... Um, uh, status quo was because people were asking me why, why, why would you hide it? What does it really matter? Why not tell people the world looks like? And the big reason, which is why you know I, I did this in status quo, I backed off a little bit when I got to eleven and twelve. I'm sorry, eleven, uh, ten, eleven. But uh, status quo was uh, was was trying to tell people is like, look, <clears throat> religion has been looking for the proof of God for a long time. You know, thousands of years, you know, you know, something that they can show people, you know, the the ark, you know, the, the Holy Grail, as it were. And now, folks, this is what I meant earlier about my uh, Mark coming with the kind of the pragmatic overview using religion there. <laughs> Just wanted to throw that in there, brother. Go oh, ahead. no, no, that's fine. That's fine. They, but it, but it's but part of it's true. And that is, look, religion and science have been at each other's, uh, you know, butting heads for a long time. And. The people that discovered whatever was out there, you know, you want to call it the firmament, you know, call it the firmament, but whatever it is, it is proof of God. You know, proof of intelligent design is the hand, it's got God's handprint all over it. Amen. If you're a amen. scientific, I'm sorry, go ahead. He said amen. Amen, <laughs> brother. If, 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 if you get out there and you're a scientific organization and you see this, do you re- and you sit down at a, at a boardroom table shortly afterwards and say, okay, um, it appears that religion may have a have a, a leg up on this. Uh, should we tell the population? Should we tell people what's actually out there? Do we really want to get into this argument again? Because, um, you know, Christianity especially, they're going to come back and they're going to quote chapter and verse. They're going to say, look, we knew this since the beginning. And you guys have been lying to this, and it would severely undermine a lot of the power structures in the world. Uh, yeah, they could recover somewhat you know they could they could try to adjust to that but it would be uh you know you're you're asking you're asking people to fire themselves basically because these science organizations some of them wouldn't survive uh, you know it would the 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 next year if this was disclosed and i well, their, their history their history mark there's two things that bowls immediately and that's evolution it's gone it's history there yeah, isn't yeah. it's gone it's down the tube all yeah, right. evolution. You're right. Absolutely right. A- evolution would be gone. Um, but but think of it from a from a practical standpoint. The um, every college in every country in the world, every astrophysics department, every astronomy department, they would have to be dismantled and compl- You know, if they even survived at all. But even the other physical sciences, geology, hydrology, uh, geography, archaeology, all, right. all those groups would have to completely retool from a different point of view. The, the textbooks would have to be completely revamped to account for this new model, which happens to be the old model. Right. And this would be a big... Yeah, evolution... Oh, it would just get It's gone. Boys. It's history. I mean, yeah. that's the end of it, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, would be, it would be absolutely gone. I mean, it's already becoming a dinosaur now, and even Dawkins is having to try to lean toward intelligent design, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's... Look, they, they're just not going to deal with that. If I, there's one thing I've learned, again, about the authority, and that is they will delay and not take chances. They were basically going to keep this thing going for as long as they could. The idea at that point came forward and says, you know what? Let's, it's only money. 
well, let's see how long we can protect this thing. So that's when they, they created the Antarctic Defense Force, which is a multinational Navy and Air Force, which patrols the entire Antarctic coastline. What, what the heck is it defending? There's nobody there. So yeah, like, I bet you, you guys have... didn't even know that existed. <laughs> yeah, why, why do you have that's fighter wild. planes? Why do you have state-of-the-art fighter planes just cruising the Antarctic coastline? Who, who are you looking for? You know, that's, that's to the extent they will protect this thing if they, if they can. So, yeah, so people, you, you want to know why? That's why. It's, it, is a, it changes everything, and it changes it very, very quickly. Some, you know, I, I, it kills me every time I see, usually it's a younger person, that'll be, uh, you know, on the forums. They'll say, what does it matter whether it's a globe or it's flat? I'm going because <laughs> of it. I go, because of it's flat? It, it, be, God made the flat. That's, that's why. And then you've, got a, then you've got a real problem on your hands if you've been doing bad works over your life, uh, which we'll get into. So, uh, so number six was depth perception, and that was real quick. Uh, that was people, people were asking me already, you know, by the time I even, you know, even though I'd only had the clues out less than a week, people were emailing me. And they were saying, well, how thick is this thing? And I was going, well, pff, nobody knows for sure, but what I can tell you, I can tell you a couple things. One is, is that whatever the, the science has been telling you how thick the world is, is completely a load of crap. They don't know anything, and, and you can look this up. The science, you know, no private company or no private group, the military, you know, who knows what they can do with atomic weapons, but no drill has ever drilled farther down than eight miles or, right. uh, or 12 kilometers if you're in Europe. That's Russia. Um, they did it too. Yeah, yeah, Russia. Well, and the Germans also did it. And, yeah, but Russia, I think, was one of the first groups to do it. And, mm -hmm. again, when you get down to eight miles, the, the heat just keeps building up and up to where the drill bits turn to clay and, uh, and they, you can't drill anymore. It's, it's, it's over. So how are you telling me how you got through 8,000 miles worth of, the, you know, how, how the inner core of the world, everyone remembers the, from grade school and junior high, the cross sections of the world. You cut it open and it looks like a jawbreaker, where it's just these different bands of colors going all the way to this white molten caramel center. And I'm going, wait, 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 how do you know anything? And, and science well, I'll first. tell you how they know, Mark. They invent a bunch of mathematics and false junk to back up their lie. You have to tell another uh, it, lie to back up a lie. That, that or maybe true. they were listening to the fallen ones. <laughs> ah, there you go. Uh, but anyway, it doesn't really matter because we can't get down to a certain point. So people are asking, it's like, well, how thick would it be? I go, well, you wouldn't have to make it very thick. You know, you could be, uh, you know, if for practical purposes – I don't know, a couple hundred miles, maybe. You know, you could hold an entire civil. You get a. For me, people got to remember that civilization that we know lives in a very, very narrow band. We only ninety-five percent of our civilization lives from sea level to about five thousand feet. Everybody else, you know, that's because we. That's where it's more comfortable to breathe. When you get above seven thousand feet, people start developing altitude sickness. Above ten thousand feet, you know, it gets really, really tough. So we live in a really thin sliver of uh yeah it's wide but it's very very um it's wafer thin and so uh, you know as far as keeping another civilization below here you wouldn't have to you wouldn't have to need need much especially mm -hmm. for uh, any of the the natural or mechanical processes right so that was that was number six that was depth perception that was pretty easy um number seven was the long haul <clears throat> and that was a that was oops sorry my phone bugging out for a second there uh, that was a, that was an interesting one, because uh, that was that was kind of based off the German guy that was talking about the plane routes in the southern hemisphere and how they're wrong. And and that, this was one of those things that people can look up for themselves. Uh, one of those things that you can't hide. You can hide Antarctica. You can hide space, but you can't hide uh, if if the map is flat. If it's round like a dinner plate. You can't hide the fact that there are no shortcuts on a dinner plate. On a globe, all sorts of shortcuts all day long. You know, you should be over, over the South Pole or the North Pole over a certain ocean. But on a flat plate, unfortunately, the way the continents are laid out, there's two particular continents that are laid on completely opposite ends of the plate. One is being South America and one is being Australia. Now, on a globe, South America and Australia are fairly close to each other, just a 12-hour flight across the South Pacific Ocean. Piece of cake. But on a flat map, they are completely at opposite ends of the world. And if you want to simulate going across the ocean, well, you'd have to take this round, like a, like a needle on a record player, you'd have to take this roundabout way, and it's way longer than it should be. So 
what they were doing was what, what I, basically what the, the the short version of this is is there's very 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 few nonstops flights between anywhere in South America and anywhere in Australia, and that includes capital cities. In fact, there are some capital cities you cannot get nonstops, which makes no sense. You know, up here in the north, we get nonstops all all day long. You know, it's just a question of how much money you want to pay and what time you want to go. Down south, though, some of these flights do not exist. And what was interesting was is that the, it, it was the connections. So it's not like uh, – so if I was going for like from Rio to Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, to, say, Sydney, Australia, that should be just a straight shot across the South Pacific Ocean. No airspace to deal with, real easy. Those flights don't exist. And if they do exist, they have to take these connections, but the connections are really, really odd. They'll go through the Middle East. They'll go up into, into weird countries in the Middle East, or they'll head out to um, – uh, uh, I've seen some even go through San Francisco. Why in the world, if you're going from South America to Australia, are you connecting through San Francisco or Los Angeles or Dallas? It doesn't make any sense. You're staring at these flights and going, why are you making it way harder? Basically, they're making it way harder than they should should. Yeah, be. but some people are going to come back at you, Mark, and say, oh, they're, they, it's the economy. They're going to make money. They're going to pick these people up. That don't hold water. Go ahead. And yeah, explain. no, no. It doesn't, it doesn't hold water at all. And one of the reasons is fine. You're picking up people, but you're doubling the distance of the flight. It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense unless you put it that same flight on a flat map. And then those weird angles that you're taking on a globe, they flatten right out, and they turn mm-hmm. into these really shallow dog legs or a perfectly straight line. And the odds of that happening are slim to none. Mm-hmm. And that was really, you know, the, the long haul was really going into detail. And there's just people that have put up way better videos than mine on the plane stuff because a lot of people have, have tried to book stuff. And it's really, really interesting. The short point, point, point though, is... Is that's what you would do? You would hide, as you you would mask as many flights in the southern hemisphere as you could. You don't want people taking nonstops in the southern hemisphere, and here's why: if you do that, it turns into um, uh, if you if you do not if if you take a nonstop flight in the southern hemisphere, it's not going to go where you think it's going to go. Yeah, you may take off at one point, maybe maybe if the flight's real. I, we're still waiting to see if some of these flights are real and land in another point. point but you can't tell me how the route got there. You know, you can't you can't tell me how you got from point A to point B, which kind of and I'll, I'll kind of skip over because creative force was more of a motivational thing. People immediately emailed me after the set, clue seven, and they kept quoting, "Oh my gosh." Qantas Flight 64 all the time, Auckland, New Zealand to Santiago, Chile. And they kept quoting this flight. And then and there was like these five nonstops, you know, like five in the entire Southern Hemisphere. There's only like five nonstops down there, which is, again, people did that didn't seem to bother people. It should, but it didn't. And so I started looking at the system. I was going, okay, if you've got a nonstop, how are they keeping people from figuring out uh, that the map is wrong? And that's when I saw it, and, and Clue 9 is called The Magic Show, and which shows that people, or that flights, when they leave either South America or Australia, they get over the water, you know, maybe 150, 200 miles, and then they drop off the GPS system entirely. They disappear. They're no longer there, visually and from a data standpoint. And, and what I mean is, visually, if you're staring at this, you can look this up. There's all sorts of flight plane, um, real-time trackers out there. So if you're tracking... Uh, your loved ones from from destination to destination. You can do this worldwide, and uh, one's called PlaneFinder.net, which is the one I used. And basically, what happens was I was watching these planes take off from South America, like they were heading towards uh, Australia, and they get over the water and they just blink out, they disappear. And then I look at the plane data, you know, because you can look at the individual data, and those would would turn off as well, and they go into approximate mode or estimated mode, which basically means we have no idea where the plane is. And then they wouldn't come back on until about an hour before landing, which was amazing. It's like, you know, so your plane is not being, if you're flying over an ocean in the Southern Hemisphere, your plane is not being tracked at all. As soon as you get over the oceans, it is gone. And the, you know, initially I'd said, well, it's being turned off deliberately because they don't want people to see what the, what the actual route of the plane is, because the plane is going to take a route that wouldn't make sense. You know, there's, again, there's no reason to fly from South America across the western coast of the United States to get to Australia. It doesn't make sense on a globe, but it makes perfect sense on a flat map. Mm -hmm. And then people came at me later, and I didn't really talk about this in the clues, and they said, you know, maybe it's even easier than that. Maybe the reason why they're not tracking those planes, it's not because they're turning off manually. 
because they can't track them, and that is because the satellites that supposedly run the GPS system aren't really there at all. Because it GPS stands for Global Positioning System, uh, mm-hmm. designed by the Department of Defense, 1995, went online. And the United States mil- you know, military system, we, you know, we overdo everything. And there are massive gaps in the coverage in the Southern Hemisphere. All, basically, all three oceans in the Southern Hemisphere, the South Atlantic, the South Pacific, and the Indian Oceans, are not being tracked. It was, it was but staggering. In, uh... In the northern hemisphere, Mark, they tell them about how well it's covered. Oh, the northern hemisphere is bulletproof. You can, uh, you can uh, yes, it track, is. You can track flights any time you want in the northern hemisphere because that's all that matters is the northern hemisphere. Mm-hmm. Although even those flights take weird routes. So like if a plane's going from uh, like San Francisco to Japan, it should be a straight shot over the North Pacific Ocean. But it tends to hug, the even without landing, it tends to hug the entire Alaskan co- coastline all the way past the Bering Strait and then go down, you know, bordering Russia mm-hmm. all the way in Japan. Why would you do that? It doesn't make sense um, uh, on a globe, but it does on a flat map. And, uh, yeah, but, yeah, the Northern Hemisphere, perfectly fine. Southern Hemisphere, you can look up. Go, go to planefinder.net. You know, look at those three oceans. Tell me why there's no planes in those three oceans. And then if you want to have fun, fly, find a plane that looks like it's going to be going over the ocean and watch it disappear. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's amazing. Um, <clears throat> and then we got into uh, Hiding God, which was number 10. And that was a, a one that I had been dodging for a while because people, people were emailing me a lot and they're saying, look, you're, you're not dealing with, you're not giving um, religion the credit it's due. And, you know, you're, you're trying to be, like you said, pragmatic and, and trying right. to be as objective as possible. And, and I said, you know what? You're right. You're right. I got to deal with this. And so that's when I laid in and I said, look, this is, if you want me to be blunt, this is the authority structure of, of the world, you know, whoever runs this place. Basically, they are hiding, not only are they hiding wealth from you, and they're hiding your personal safety because you're not being tracked in, in planes, but they are hiding the handprint of God from you. Uh, it may not be God himself standing there at a door or anything like that, but it is definitely uh, divine handiwork, no question. Uh, and if it's there, somebody in the government made the decision that they were going to keep that from the population. And if you've got an adversarial force that is against God 100%, of course you're going to hide it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, why? Why wouldn't they? You know, it's it's, because they're they uh, they want to keep their jobs and they want to keep the power the 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 way they they they've kept it for hundreds and and thousands of years, and they like the status quo, and that bother that did bother me because there's a lot of people out there, you know, millions and millions of people that want more from the, uh, the, you know, they want to know about their world. They want to know how, their place in the universe and their relationship with God. And, you know, uh, people pray every day, whether or not they go to church or not. And this gives it a whole new level uh, of meaning. And it's being hidden artificially from us. And, and yes, I was being blunt when I said that. I said, look, I go, the proof of God has been out there since about 1956. It's yours. Uh, you know, find a way. Find somebody who knows somebody, and see if you can you can get this thing help this thing get revealed. I've got and, some. Uh, by the way, I've, I've, before I forget it, I'm bad about forgetting stuff. I've got some uh, had some interesting takes on the reason for that and the time period that is uh, talked about in the in the Bible in the King James Bible as the end of the times of the Gentiles or the time of the nations. But that's a whole different story because during the period of time for the last 2,000 years, it's the just shall live by faith. And yeah. faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But it has a definite end to that time period. And this may, I said, folk, I said maybe, I said this may be it. Because the time of the punishment for us the Anglo, from the Anglo-Israel perspective, our punishment times ended. 390 times 10, 2009. Just keep that in mind. Go ahead, bro. Got it. Got it. Yeah. And, and I, I wasn't kidding. You know, I, I said, look, this, this, this is big. This is, this is the biggest thing I, I could ever think of, which is it, it changes the thing. And I'll, I'll, I'll kind of segue into souls in the system with this, which is, the reason why this changes everything is it gives you the parent in the room 
security. It gives you a, it gives you several things. One, you're not alone. Obviously, you're being looked after. You're being cared after. Uh, there's a reason, and I, I wasn't necessarily wanted. I didn't want to poke fun at the astronauts from the Apollo program, but when they were asked by a, a really annoying reporter to swear on the Bible and uh, and say that they had actually gone to the moon, none of them would do it. And what I meant, and what I was was hinting at, and the reason why they didn't do it is because I believe they were shown. They said, look, you know, they were told, look, you're going to fake you're going to fake this. And here's why you're going to fake this. And I think it finally sunk in to where they realized that they were dealing with a with a divine power here. And they didn't know their, their only reaction was the reaction that should be. It's like, look, I'm not going to lie uh, under oath. You know, oh, this is great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie under oath and and say that I did something when I didn't. Yeah, they didn't believe they were gonna get struck down by lightning, but they weren't gonna take that chance, not not by a long shot. And that's why I was trying to tell people, like, look, if this gets revealed, we become better, not not because of an overlordy, overbearing type thing, but because look, <clears throat> if you've got a parent in the room, are you really gonna start breaking stuff? You know, are you going to still do the bad things you were doing? Uh, you know, if, if you know that you're somebody looking over your shoulder, looking after you, caring for you, uh, it's, it's, it changes what we do as a civilization. War ends. Hate crimes end. Uh, racism, sexism, all that gets knocked down a whole, you know, to much, much lower levels. And really, what would you do maliciously to somebody else? What, what line? I mean, yeah, of course, some people wouldn't care. But most people, you know, if they'd think about, you know, stealing something or kidnapping or anything like that, they'd think, not only would they think twice, they probably just wouldn't do it. Because why, why would you? Why would you do something malicious if you knew <clears throat> there was a, um, uh, for lack of a better term, a scorecard on you? If well, you the, knew one, the your, thing about it is, folks, let me, can I interject something? Absolutely, you can. Yeah. The ones that have the law written in their hearts, According to the book of Hebrews, it would do a double take. Uh, there would be a rethinking of everything to the ones that have the law written in their hearts, folks. You think about what he's saying and think about the law written in their hearts in the new covenant. And for the ones with the law written in their hearts, they would take a double take on things that are done. As far as the wicked, the wicked are going to do wicked. The ones that are wicked will do wickedly. Just keep, it, just keep this stuff in mind according to the word of God. Go ahead, brother. Yeah, yeah, and 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 you're right. Um, but I think even the even a lot of the wicked people uh, would think twice, and and which is why I used the the traffic cam uh, analogy, which was <clears throat> everyone's run a, a red light. You know, no no nobody's. You know, uh, I well I think I don't know if you guys have, but the um, <laughs> but but anyone that's run a red light now, of course, you've got these cameras at, at major intersections. You don't run the light when there's a camera there. Why not? Well, because we're being we're being watched, and and I might get caught. Well, then why were you thinking about doing it in the first place? You don't aren't going to do the things uh, that you would normally do because you know you're accountable. You know that there are rules. Even if you don't know exactly what the rules are, let's say you don't know uh, what all the scripture is, chapter and verse. Maybe you don't know your Ten Commandments. Even if you don't know that, everybody in their heart, except for maybe the psychopaths, knows indelibly what right and wrong are we've all called conscience weird... is called conscience mark <laughs> yeah yeah i mean we 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 all know we get that feeling you know that little that little feeling you know the, the in our in our stomachs that says yeah i'm doing a wrong thing or i'm doing the right thing and that becomes way way easier mm -hmm. uh if it's if it's a structure even though you can't see the structure you know even though you look at the sky the sky looks the same you know even though you know, we've never no, none of us 99.99 percent of us never seen the globe anyway you know, that changes. Like, okay, it's not a globe anymore. Now, now what makes it different, though, is that now it is a, um, a, a, a circular, you know, a flat circular system, but now you know that there's somebody behind it. And, and again, that changes everything. It's the only conspiracy I know of. Every, most of the other conspiracies are doom and gloom and very negative. Mm -hmm. But this is the only one I know of that can actually take us back from the brink. I, I pondered that all afternoon, this afternoon. I wrote down some notes about an evangelistic um, perspective on, on this clue right here. I, I've got a few different takes on it. But, th yeah, that's, that's absolutely correct, brother. This would change people, okay? No doubt about it. It may take a, a little while, all right? But the more, that, the more that this fact got put down on people and the more they understood it, say, for instance, the, the firmament was outlined. 
by some wild stretch. That would yeah. change everything completely. Yeah. Yeah. There'd be a lot more fear of getting caught. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, that's what are you he's talking about? What, to the point where you wouldn't do the Lord, right? Yeah, you wouldn't do it. Uh, I mean, look at the astronauts. I mean, yeah, granted, they had they had quite a few years to let it sink in, but they got to the point where they wouldn't even lie. That that shows you how powerful this really is. And and I, I can't uh, I can't overstate this. You multiply that by an entire civilization, and <clears throat> all the all the bad things that we do, most of them go away. Thanks, guys. Thanks, James, yeah, man. We we become we become all one big family, one community, uh, you know, one uh, one people. Yeah, and and, it, and another thing, Mark, just tell, just you can, you, um, you can say this. Take a look around you, folks. Take a look around you at the degeneration. Take a look around you at how things have gone since evolution has taken the mainstream. Think about what they've taken, even from lost folks, even from the wicked, they've taken away God out of the conscience and the mind. Look at your fruit that's going all over the world. Oh, it's wicked. It's wickedness. Yep. And this would uh, yeah, change yeah, the whole perspective. And, and which is why I put it out to the, the authority and the governments and the royalty and whoever's controlling this place. And that is, look... <laughs> You're not going to be able to fix this. Man, mankind cannot fix what we've gotten ourselves into at this point. We're we're in real trouble. And I don't want this is not me being doom and gloomish. We all see it. We all feel it. We're we're in, we're in a bad way. And this is the this for me is the answer. It is the you know which is why I'm telling the government it's like look don't fight this. Come clean. Let let this thing happen naturally and and let or be part of it. Get in front of it. Because if you don't yeah, again, you'll still be accountable either way. You want to fight this to the end, fine. You know, you'll you'll have you'll have some answering to do before it's over. You know, and and uh, that's that's why I for me it's a message of hope. It yeah. it is it is something that we can look forward to because at, I'm serious. I've had moments where I was moved literally to tears when I when I was thinking of this. I wasn't just excited. I was like, man, this could absolutely fix fix it all. I understand and, uh, where you're coming and, from. Jesus one, Christ is one going to fix it all. But I totally understand where you're coming from, brother. Yeah, and yeah. you people out there that listen to me and and um, listen to my teaching and preaching, you remember how much I have harped on the, the second law of thermodynamics, how there's entropy in a closed, quote-unquote, system. This absolutely is exponential. The second law of thermodynamics says everything decays unless there's something from the outside this enclosure, outside the enclosure that comes in and rejuvenates it, all right? This would rejuvenate things. This would upset the natural law, second law of thermodynamics, down on the individual basis. That's what Mark's saying. Do you understand what I'm saying, Mark? Yeah, yeah, I do. Okay. I I do. Go ahead, brother. Well, so... That's that's where I kind of you know where I left people at when I got to the end of uh, end of the clues, which was, look, this is a you know yes there are a couple more clues coming, uh, but I want to be inspired like I was before, when, when I did this. I mean I I absolutely was inspired to do these first. I mean I truth be told, and I've said this in our interviews, I I did not write these clues. Somebody wrote these for me. Uh, it was it was handed to me. It was it was put into my head, uh, and and I was you know moved to, to, to create them as best I could, and, uh, and it, it seems to have worked because the response has been so, so positive. And again, which is also very unusual for a conspiracy type thing where all, so many of the emails and phone calls, people are saying that, that it's, you know, it's, a, it's a game changer, that their minds have been blown, and, and so, many, um, so many religious people have, have contacted me. And, and the, it, it, I, I'm not going to take all the credit for it because, you know, yeah, fine, it reaffirmed their faith. But, uh, you know, in, in this case, I'm just part of the message system. Mark, listen, <laughs> brother, it gives it the reason it's doing it, what it's doing is because of the charitable spiritual aspect of it in folks in folks's hearts, whether they admit it with their lips or even in their mind down deep inside in their subconscious. They want to change. OK, yeah. Yep. They, they, and they see they down deep inside whether they'll admit it or not. They 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 ha- they won't hope. Okay, people yep. won't hope. Yep. Uh, yeah, I agree. I agree. 
Um, so that's that's where I left him, and at that ever since then, uh, you know, it's just been a, a never-ending series of of um, uh, me trying to clarify things and and answering questions and and really encouraging people to to figure out, you know, to to come up with the, the answers for themselves. And uh, it's been it's been it's been a joy to watch. It's been so so much more positive than it has been negative. And uh, that's that's where I am now. So what I imagine because uh, I've been kind of rambling on for a while. Uh, pe- do, do people have questions? Do yeah, you know? folks in the chat room, if you've got any questions, just shoot, and Brother Kevin can relay them to us on uh, on air. There was oh you know there was something I was going to mention to you because I don't know if anyone has, and that was um uh there was something that that, that I don't know if I caught my eye. I can't remember if it was Revelations. You guys are going to have to 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 mention it. Or have to do the research on it. That was remember the uh, the 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 quote where I can't, I can't remember if it was Peter or whoever it was. They was told not to write whatever the the event down. Oh, that's uh, in Daniel. It's Daniel. Da- it's in Daniel where the, the angel tells him to to roll up the scrolls and don't write it down until the don't time of the down. end. Right. Yeah, and I and I was thinking I was going you, that bugged me also when I was very young. I was going, what would be so big that you weren't even allowed to write it down and put it in the Bible? And I was going, you know what? This might be that, you know, something something as simple is that is uh, you know the earth it, it's you know the firmament is real or the 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 world is flat or whatever you want. Or I'll even take it one step further, and and you guys may disagree, uh, you know, on the belief of the the secrets of Fatima, and that was the third secret that nobody ever 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 talked about. What if what if that was the third secret? Well, yes. that, that, and, I'm just saying. Yeah, that, that that's a good that you know it's a good hypothesis. But the yeah. thing, folks, the thing about it is this is a big deal. I don't care. Listen, <laughs> y'all, you got to do go check out. Just type in Mark Sargent, and he's the first guy that pops up on YouTube. Well, he is on my computer. The first one that pops up on the channels. This thing has a spiritual aspect to it, and I have tried to tear it down coming from the side of, well, i got to figure out how they could use this good thing to do a bad thing, and I've come from every direction thinking about this thing. This is all I do during the daytimes mostly now is research this thing and study this thing out, praying about it, and saying, Lord, show me something, show me something. If, if, if there's a bad angle to this, and there is, and I'll tell you what it is in just a second. But okay. Lord, show me if there's a show me if there's uh, something wrong with this. You know, I know the book says it. Therefore, I'm there forever. I don't care if they if, if, if uh, somebody from CNN or Fox gets on a rocket and takes a, a a camera in their hand and gets stuck on the end of a balloon and goes up and and it shows its round. I'm sticking with the book, folks. You know me. I'm sticking with this word of God. Period. And and you allegorizers can just take it and fly kite, all right? Because that you see where your allegorizing got you. That's what it got you when you try to compromise with the world, try to change the book like I did, try to change it in your mind, isogeist the text, and try to read into it something what it's not saying. This is the kind. This is right now. It's a simple thing, but it could be a lot bigger thing. That's the problem you'll get into when you don't take the scriptures literally. You wind up with an opinion, and you know the old saying: everybody's got one. Nice. And that, and the thing about that, what I said, there's a bad side to it. I'll tell you what it is. Come out, get get a big following going. It will separate us, but that's what the book says. Anyway, it's going to happen anyway. Will be stick out like a sore thumb? Absolutely. We're supposed to be a peculiar people. We're supposed to be fools for Christ's sake. The Lord said, marvel not if the world hates you. It hated him first. Yes, this will separate you. Yes, they will laugh at you. Yes, it will divide you off and make the quote-unquote so-called authorities be able to spot you quicker. But that's what it's all about, folks. If 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 you're a child of the king, that's what it's all about because it's not about this life here in the end. Set your affections on things above and not on things of this earth. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. 
Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good, perfect, and acceptable will of God. Well, God. Mark Sargent's Mark Sergeant's clues are one. I, I could pray sermon after sermon <laughs> after sermon. I've done got five put together just on some of his clues. That's the reason I know it has a spiritual element to it, folks. Not only does it line up with what the Word of God says, it's got a spiritual element to it, 100%. Go ahead, Mark. Go ahead. Oh, um, well... We, we have one question in yeah, the chat yeah. room. They ask about the Coriolis effect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of course, of course. And and there'll be... Uh, there's actually three questions that come up, but I'll address the Coriolis thing. Um, uh, the big three questions are the um, gravity... Uh, Coriolis effect and, uh, you know, the, the, the season, the, the movement of the sun and the stars. Um, the Coriolis effect takes two, two different ways you want to look at this. Um, you can either do it from the ground uh, because people say, well, don't you have to adjust for, in fact, there's a letter. Maybe I should read part of it, um, even though I was going to read it on one of my shows. There was a letter because artillery has to supposedly adjust for uh, the, the, the rotation of the earth and, and the curvature of the earth. And there was a um, a guy in the army that was over in Iraq, and he was saying, uh, basically, the big thing was, he said, let me see here. I want to make sure I read it right. <clears throat> he was saying, uh, I was attached to an artillery unit during a tour in Fallujah where we consistently shot miles and miles away with variable timed fuses. I mean, we could have, uh, have the round burst over the air, uh, in the air over a target. Never did I ever really hear any corrections made for curvature of the earth, spin, or Coriolis. Mind you, they are doing this with a computer, yet there is always a backup person doing it analog with a charting table and maps, calling out everything he is doing. And if the computers don't match the guy doing it, they manually, they, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't fire. He goes, I never saw an equation for any of this. And, you know, I'm, I'm a shooter as well. Now, granted, you know, I, I don't do long-range shooting with a 50 cal or anything like that. But scopes... <laughs> Yeah, I can't tell you how many periodicals I've read over the years, and I'm talking about the stuff in the ground. We'll deal with the stuff in the sky in a second. But with the stuff in the ground, look, the scopes deal with windage and elevation. There's, I've never seen anything deal with any sort of, you know, uh, curvature. There is none, Mark. I'll it, go ahead it, and cut you off. There is none. Yeah, it's it's gravity. That's, I mean, yeah, you have to deal with, with elevation because, yeah, the gravity will eventually pull the pull the bullet down. But dealing with anything else at long ranges, I mean, here's a guy from the U.S. military saying, nope, not happening. Uh, when it comes to stuff in the sky, Coriolis effect, you know, because people will say, uh, you know, the stars move one way in, on one, you know, on one hemisphere. Northern so, hemisphere and southern are, are southern are hemisphere, yeah, Clock, clockwise versus counterclockwise. And I try to tell them is this, uh, because it's tough for people to get their hand around. I go, whoever built this, let's say, God built this, can do anything He wants with the sky. Uh, this is the easy version. This is the version for you guys, uh, and that is. Look, if he wants to, to, to make the sun do figure eights, he will. Uh, if he wants to spell out your name in stars or uh, you know, put a smiley face on the moon, can do it. So Now, we can do this. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to compare us to God necessarily, but we can do this in planetariums right now with software. It's called an instance, and we've been, had the ability to do this since, since about 2004. I should know. I play a lot of this stuff. And that is, uh, think of a planetarium, if you guys have ever been inside one, and think of a projection system. But, th but most of the time, a planetarium only has one. But if you put in more than one, you can do some interesting things. Like, for example, if a planetarium is big enough, you stand on one side and your buddy stands on the other. And he says, oh, hey, I'm looking at the belt of Orion. And you say, hey, I'm looking at the belt of Orion, too. Thing is, though, if there's two projection systems, you're not looking at the same belt, even though you both think you are. And that is because... It's, it, and if you have multiple projection systems, you can do anything you want. But from a God standpoint, the Coriolis effect is just a, a very creative. I've got, I've got the biblical answer if you want the Coriolis effect explained throw it, in throw the it Word of God. What do, you, what do you got? Brother Speak David, up. turn to Job chapter 38. Okay. Scroll down there to where he starts talking about Orion, Pallades, and Arcturus. And there's your Corey. There's your in the very first chapter of the book, folks. It talks about the reason the Lord, the stars and the moon and the sun are there. Okay, Do you remember signs and seasons and this that and the other. It's, and he made the stars also just a ho hum, you know, 
That's God the Father. He does all this fantastic work, and then he throws in there, oh, yeah, by the way, I, I made the stars also. And then yeah. we went through the book of Enoch. We saw about those luminaries. But to go back to the scriptures, I know you've probably forgotten what it says about the Pallades and Orion and Arcturus. Well, Brother David's fixing to read. Now listen to what he says. Go ahead, Brother okay. David. Okay. Job thirty-eight thirty-one. Canst thou bind the sweet influences of Pallades, or loose the bands of Orion? Canst thou bring forth Maseroth in his season? Did or you can- see those sweet influences? Yeah. Influences in the and Orion's right there. Influences in the northern hemisphere. Influences in the southern hemisphere. Hmm. It's influences. The stars influence things here on the earth. If you take it literal, then you say, okay, it says that the that Pallades influences things here. So, uh, no, I, I totally hear you. Um, a cr- short version, though, Cor- Coriolis. That's easy. Uh, it's 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 not it's not difficult at all to to get your head around that. But you know, yeah. Got to be in the right mindset for it. Uh, what, was there any other um, interesting questions they had? I think Brother Kevin may have another one in the chat room. I'm not sure. Uh, no, there's not. I That's okay. Plenty. That's good. That means at least I did part of my job, which was explaining it as best I could. You did a good job, Brother. But like I said, these folks been here. Now, <laughs> I per- they were prepared for a lot of it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, that's great. I'm 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 glad because nor- normally I, I get you know you get the standard stuff. You know, I'll, I'll bring up a couple others. You know, because other people you sure know, give them some, give them some of the SOP. Okay, give them some right. of the SOP. Out um, there. Other ones will be the curvature. You know, why why do you see sail sailboats supposedly sinking in the horizon and and they go. Um, uh, hull first, and then eventually the mast. And actually, within the last month, there's been some wonderful videos been put out. And again, we we haven't had the ability to really look at this without HD cameras. Mm-hmm. And that is, most of it is because of refraction, where the the hull is being blurred out, but the but the uh, the mast isn't really dropping as fast as you you would expect it would with the curvature, which is amazing. Uh, And there's some wonderful videos showing that. So, no, anyone that tells you, and anyone also that tells you they see a curvature out of the airplane, I get that a ton. It's like, really? Fine, take a picture of it, put it on your computer, put a piece of paper or a ruler up to it, tell me that you still see the curve. You won't. Uh, That's because uh, even the high-altitude weather balloons that have been done, uh, especially the one that was done in the U.K. just last year. Let me give you a personal testimony. I used to fly back and forth from Pensacola, Florida to Fairbanks, Alaska. That's 120 miles south of the the quote-unquote Arctic Circle. I ain't never seen no curve. Yeah. No, it's it's not there. Uh, But people want to see it. Again, it's no different than the globe. People expect to see the curve. Because it's uh, because they 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 notice it with the the globe and they say well it's got to be there we uh-huh. see the globe the curve has got to be there it's like no no you want it to be there and that's that's the big difference a lot I of can it give is a perspective little, uh, testimony I'll... there Go ahead. Sorry, I um, used to live in a city called St Catharines which is right close to the shore of um, Lake Ontario and right be, be very close to us was Niagara on the Lake, which is right on the lake, and it's right by the border with New York State by Buffalo. Yeah. And if you looked across the lake, you could see Toronto, the skyline. And uh, I checked yesterday, and it's uh, over 30 miles across there. And if you do the, the, the equation, that curvature of the Earth um, should be 600 feet below the horizon. You are correct, yeah. the, the CN Tower is 1,500 feet, so you'd just see maybe part of the CN Tower poking its nose up if the earth was curved. But you can actually see the whole skyline, and I would drive a lot on the Highway 403, and there's a place called Grimsby there, and the from Gris- Grinsby to across the lake is also over 30 miles. And again, see the whole skyline of Toronto, no problem. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, the Chicago skyline, same sort of thing. Uh, people want to have fun. That's 50 miles. Should be, because remember, it's 8 inches per mile squared. 
Uh, I know a lot of people aren't good at math, but just just admit there's charts out there for you. You don't have to do the calculations yes, yes. yourself. But 50 miles, that should be pushing 1,700 feet. You should not be able to see the Chicago skyline. And people say, well, no, it's a mirage. The light's being bent. It's like, really? Because it looks like a pretty clear mirage. Uh, and the, the buildings aren't <laughs> wavering at all. The, the lights are all there. They're not leaning back. So, no, no. And that's what everyone's really jumping on right now is the yeah. curvature. That's, that's the easy test because anyone can do it. Anyone um, can do it. That's right. Yeah. So, I'll tell right. you and something. I don't know if this is how this can be proven or what the provable facts are, but I can tell you this from experience because I was born there. And that's in North Alabama. The highest point in the state of Alabama is 5,280 feet. It's Mount yeah. Chihaw. You can go to the top of Mount Chihaw, and you can see three states, Georgia, Tennessee and Mississippi from Mount Chihaw in Alabama. Now, how would that be possible? Even though you're 5,000 feet high, how would that be possible on a curved dirt? Good point. It, you could not do it. Yeah, yeah, totally hear you. Yeah, so those are those are the big ones people will throw at you. But again, you know, for anyone that's trying to introduce people to this, uh, there's a couple tips I can I can throw at you. And unfortunately, I gotta I gotta wrap this up soon because I've got to. Sure. I got a, another engagement. But what I was going to say was there's a couple things people got to understand. One is you don't open up with flat earth. You do not use that term if you can help it because and, – and that will show you how, how well conditioned we are because you can say Truman Show all day long to somebody. You can say enclosed world, which is why my website is called enclosed world, not that flat earth. That was wise. That was wise. Yeah, because, because people will brace against it. I can say Truman Show to you 15 minutes straight. Second, I say flat Earth, your eyes start to glaze over, and you know people all of a sudden it's like, yeah, whatever, you're a nut job. And I, I completely understand because I was the guy calling people nut jobs. Uh, I believe me. I and some people, and the other thing I try to tell people is like, look, some people can adjust to this very, very quickly. They can adjust to it in a day or a few days. In fact, if you don't roll your eyes at this, if you don't laugh at this, if you don't come at this. And, uh, and ridicule it right off the bat, there's probably something wrong with you psychologically. You should probably mm -hmm. seek help because it's, it is a tough, tough subject to get around. It takes a little while to sink in. You know, you go through the five stages of acceptance, you know, denial, anger, bargaining, depression. You know, you, you will go through the gamut because your world is changing, which is why some people get really, really angry because they don't want their world changed. And I understand it. Look, I, you, want, you like the globe. You want to hang on to the globe. Hey, hang on to it for a little while longer. Great, because it's, this thing's going to this thing's gonna change eventually. And when it does, you know, it's better to be prepared than not be prepared. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Well, folks, if y'all don't have any um, questions in the chat room, and Brother Mark, you've got to leave. Um, brother, you've got another engagement. I, I do, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, well, well, will I be able to have you back on, on another program? You bet. Later? I, I'd, be, I'd love to come back on. You and by the way, I wanted, I wanted to tell you, anytime, I mean, this is, people tell you, hey, you, you take him for what he said. You down this way, you got a place to stay. Anytime. No, we'll Thank cost you, you a dime, period. Thank you, Matt. That's, that's very kind of you. And, uh, you yeah, know, I'm just going to. Try to keep keep doing what I'm doing and and reach as many people as I can and try to keep try to keep this thing going. Uh, Amen. You know, I, I, I mean, if so. you got any if you got any biblical questions about you run into any biblical questions, you feel free to call me anytime. Okay. I will. You guys you guys are a great resource for that stuff. You just call me anytime, day or night, or send me an email and I'll get you I'll get you back to answers if the Lord gives them me. I'll give them to you. Okay. Fantastic. Thank okay. you. Thank you very and much, brother David. There, if you will, go ahead. Go ahead, brother. Uh, is there any, is there anything else that uh, that I can I can answer you guys real quick? Uh, nothing in the chat room. Okay, that's cool. A couple uh, thank again. yous. They appreciate you coming on. Oh thank no, you. I I enjoyed being here. Uh, you know, for anyone, you know, watch the clues. And again, don't just watch my stuff. There's other people. I mean, granted, you got to deal with some language and some different issues than other people. But there's a lot of good stuff out there. If you can look through it, um, I've got some some liked stuff on my playlists and. Uh, there's there's a lot the material just getting broader and broader every day. So okay, uh, I wanted to give you a heads up before you leave on Jeffrey Grump. Okay, Jeffrey he's, Grump. He, yeah, he's a good. It's good to see that he's finally decided that uh, you know he's a Christian. <laughs> I remember him when he was back bad mouthing God back when he was a Buddhist. But he's a good brother. He's hard to keep up with because his mind goes so fast. Oh, yeah. He'll go from one subject to another, back to another. 
But anyway, he's a good brother. Again, I just wanted that, to let you that know. That shows you how big this thing is because he came out of retirement for this. I know. So he he was he was out. He was out of the out of the conspiracy game, and he said, "Oh yeah, I'm absolutely back in for this thing." And he's just doing amazing stuff. So look out for him. Oh, absolutely. He's he's a genius level too. He's going he's going to put some big time mathematics and all that stuff into it. Guaranteed. Yep. It. Yep. Agreed. Okay, brother Mark, you can go ahead, brother, if you want to. Um, I'm going to get us off here in a word of prayer, and I will be calling you back, brother. Call me anytime, okay? Thank you, thank you very much, guys. Okay, brother, brother David, if you thank would, you very Mr. much for coming on. Yes, brother, thanks, it thanks, was an thanks, honor everyone. to have you. Thanks, an thanks, honor. thanks, Don and Kevin and David. Thank you, guys. Okay, brother. Do you have anything in the works that we can look forward to coming up? Like any uh, recent development or uh, um, new evidence every, or a new uh, clue? Every, all the well, Clue Twelve is is in the books here, but I'm, again, I'm not going to release it until I get I get inspired to do so. Okay. Um, I, but I'm okay. still doing my my weekly show uh, every Saturday called Strange World, which uh, oh, yeah. at this point is pretty much dedicated to flat Earth. And then I'm just doing you know all all the interviews that I can. So you know any new developments that come out, I'm going to try to release them as fast as I can in Strange World, unless it's super big, and then I'm going to do a clue about it. Mm-hmm. Okay, and Maybe. so that's Truth Frequency Radio, right? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, and it's okay, also on good. also on YouTube. You can catch all the archives on YouTube as well. Okay, great. Yeah. All right. well, God bless you, brother Mark. And um, like I said, stay in touch, brother. I'm gonna be getting I, you back on the program for too long. Okay. All right. Thanks, guys, very much. God bless you, brother. Brother David, God bless just you. us in a word of prayer, brother. Okay. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks for this evening. We thank you for Brother Mark, and we thank you for dropping into his spirit all this understanding and and these clues that he wrote so eloquently and then turned into a video. We thank you for using him to open the eyes of many, and we continue that you would pray that you would continue to use him in ever greater ways and we pray that you begin to use all those who hear in the chat room that they'd begin to study and research more and be able to be used by you to further the kingdom of god and bring the truth into the the minds and into the eyes of people so that they can come face to face and do their business with you lord jesus christ and for in the protection. name of Jesus, I pray. And, Father, I pray for protection on Brother Mark. Put a hedge of angels oh, yes. about Amen. him, Father, and with drawn swords and keep him, keep yes. him clear and away from any kind of bad out, outside influence, any kind of harm that may come his way, Father. I pray for his divine protection, Lord. And we ask all yes. these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Amen, Brother Mark. You take care. All right. I'll see you guys soon. Okay, brother. Bye. Bye-bye.
already some weeks ago, I have written on my to-do list to translate the video BTC4, hashtag BTC4. Schon seit ein paar Wochen habe ich äh, auf meiner To-Do-Liste geschrieben, ähm, den Video BTC4 in Deutsch zu übersetzen. Estoy segura que esta idea puede ayudar a mucha gente económicamente. I am sure that this can help many people economically. Ich bin sicher, dass diese Idee vielen Leuten uh, finanziell helfen kann. Y da motivación para aprender Bitcoin. And give motivation to learn about Bitcoin. Und motivation geben, um über Bitcoin zu lernen. En este momento el precio de Bitcoin es muy bajo, económico. At the moment the price of Bitcoin is very low, economic. Im Moment ist der Preis von Bitcoin sehr tief. Sería el momento ideal para invertir. Hoy es el 15 de abril 2015. Would be the ideal moment to invest. Today is April 15th, 2015. Es wäre der ideale Moment zu investieren. Heute ist der 15. April 2015. El 27 de marzo 2015 he publicado en mi canal de YouTube Vanos Enigma el primer video sobre hashtag BTC4 explicando cómo me vino esta idea. On March 27th of 2015, um, I published my for the first video about hashtag BTC4 in my channel YouTube Vanos Enigma, explaining how I got the idea. Am 27. März 2015 habe ich in meinem YouTube-Channel Vanos Enigma den ersten, den ersten Video über Hashtag BTC4 veröffentlicht und äh, erzählt, erklärt, wie ich diese Idee bekommen habe. La idea consiste principalmente en lo siguiente. The idea mainly consists in the following. Die idea besteht hauptsächlich en folgenden, folgendem. Imprimir en direcciones de Bitcoin en papel. Diez o mínimo diez o mejor cien. To print Bitcoin directions in paper, at least 10 or better 100. Bitcoin adressen in Papier ausdrucken, um, minimum 10 or besser gleich 100. Y luego poner en cada dirección de Bitcoin una pequeña cantidad de Bitcoin. And then put in every Bitcoin direction a little amount of Bitcoin. Und dann in jede Bitcoin Adresse eine kleine Summe von Bitcoin transferieren. Y la próxima vez, cuando otra vez ves una persona por la calle pidiendo dinero, and the next time uh, you see again a person begging for money on the street, 
Und das nächste Mal, wenn du wieder eine Person auf der Straße betteln siehst. Y para tus amigos y amigas. And for your friends, of course. Und für deine Freunde natürlich. O tal vez eh, de propina en un restaurante. Or maybe a tip in a restaurant. Oder Trinkgeld im Restaurant. Bueno, a la hora de imprimir también copiar y guardar las llaves privadas de Bitcoin, de direcciones de Bitcoin. Or when you print the Bitcoin addresses, um, copy and save the private keys of the Bitcoin addresses, of course. Wenn man die Bitcoin-Adressen druckt, auch die, äh, auch die privaten Schlüssel, Bitcoin-Adress-Schlüsseln ähm, kopieren und speichern. Y a la hora de distribuir las direcciones de Bitcoin, escribir la fecha, por ejemplo, hoy es el 15 de... Abril 2015, escribir la fecha, más plus cuatro años, eh, igual 15 de abril 2019. And then in the moment when you distribute uh, the Bitcoin addresses, you write the date, for example, today, April 15th, 2015. Plus, plus four years uh, is April 15th, 2019. Und dann in dem Moment, wenn man die Bitcoin-Adressen verteilt, auf das Papier schreiben, das heutige Datum, zum Beispiel 15. April 2015, plus vier Jahre ist gleich 15.04.2019. Luego vas a explicar a la gente, mira, esta es la llave privada. Tú y yo la tengo, la tienes. Si no quitas, transfieres este dinero de Bitcoin, uh, en estos cuatro años yo lo vuelvo a tener, tener o sacar. Then you explain to the people, look, this is the private key. I have it and you have it. If you don't take this money, Bitcoin, out of this account, I will take it out in this um, in these four years, at the end of these four years. Und dann erklärst du den Leuten, schau, das ist der private Schlüssel. Ähm, ich und du haben diesen privaten Schlüssel, Bitcoin-Schlüssel. Wenn du äh, bis Ende dieser vier Jahre das Geld, Bitcoin, nicht raus tust, transfer, äh, dann hole ich es zurück. De esta forma das más motivación a la gente para empezar a aprender cómo funciona Bitcoin. This way you give more motivation to the people to learn how the technology of Bitcoin functions. Auf diese Weise gibst du mehr Motivation den Leuten zu lernen, wie die Technologie von Bitcoin funktioniert. En mi video antiguo.
English, Espanol. So if you are new in my YouTube channel, I recommend you to watch uh, my video mix number 64 about this hashtag Let's Talk FE. Si estás nuevo, nueva en mi canal de YouTube, te recomiendo de ver el video mix número 64 sobre el tema de hashtag Let's Talk FE. Tierra plana. Flat Earth. Secret. Secreto. But now I want to talk about maybe the most difficult uh, question. Pero ahora quiero hablar sobre que tal vez es la pregunta más difícil. The question of why are they hiding this from us? La pregunta de el por qué están escondiendo este tema de nosotros. I think there are two main reasons. Pienso que hay en dos razones principales. I want to start with the second reason, Antártica. Quiero empezar con la razón número dos, en que es Antártida. You know that after uh, the Second World War, different nations, and especially Admiral Byrd, explored Antarctic. Antarctica um, for many years. Ya sabes que después de la Segunda Guerra Mundial, uh, muchas naciones y especialmente uh, el Admiral Byrd ha explorado uh, la Antártida uh, muchos años. And there even exists a um, video about Admiral Burr talking about Antarctica, that it's, um, it has many uh, resources, oil, minerals, um, uranium. Hasta existe un video de Admiral Burr hablando sobre Antarctica. Y dice que es el, el continente más rico, que hay mucho petróleo, minerales. Um, um, but I think it's not just that. Uh, he said, yeah, it's uh, very rich, this continent. And he thinks there will be excu uh, excursions every year. But they must have discovered something else which made all nations stop exploring this continent. I get goosebumps. Pero no es solo eso. Él dijo, sí, que vamos a volver cada año explorando más. Pero muy probable que han visto algo más. Porque de repente todas las naciones han dejado de explorar Antártida. Habrán visto algo que, se, que les asustó tanto que me, sí, a mí me pone la piel de gallina. Así que, and you know, now there is an international treaty that which prohibits all nations to access Antarctica, the interior and no plane is allowed to fly over this region. Ya sabes que han hecho un, uh, un tratado que ninguna nación puede acceder a este lugar interior y tampoco aviones volar encima de Antártida. Just in relation to that topic, the wealth which is hidden, being hidden in Antarctica, en relación a ese tema que esta fortuna, estos recursos que están siendo escondidos en Antártida, play that oil, petróleo. You know, before there was a law, there had to be um, gold. Uh, 
replacing all that money which is being printed. Ya sabes que antes había una ley que había tener oro tras todo el uh, dinero que están imprimiendo. And they abolished that law. And now actually it's uh, more or less oil. Dollar oil. Luego el oro. Así es. Uh, el petróleo ha sustituido el oro. Uh, pero tampoco por entero. Tanta deuda externa, so much exterior de debt, debt based economic system, sistema basado en deuda. So imagine, imagine so many people starving from hunger and working like crazy. Así que imagina tanta gente muriendo de hambre, matándose por el dinero and so much wealth being hidden in Antarctica and toda esa fortuna está siendo escondido in Antarctica anyway this is okay this is something else Nikola's Tesla free energy uh, and all these economic interests which made uh, suppress these innovative ideas Bueno, esto es un poco aparte, pero igualmente importante, el tema de Nikola Tesla, energía libre, eh, habría, se podría ahorrar tanto dinero y solo por estos intereses de... Ah, anyway, do you know this hashtag which rhymes with democracy? Corporatocracy. ¿Conoces este...? Hasta que se rima en inglés con democracia, corporatocracy. So, okay, now I want to try to talk about this first reason, which is maybe a little bit complicated to explain my train of thoughts. Bueno, ahora voy a intentar de hablar sobre la primera razón en que tal vez es bastante complicado para explicar mis pensamientos. Just want to start with one German quote. Uh, man sieht den Wald vor lauter Bäumen nicht. Quiero empezar con un, un dicho en alemán que dice Man sieht den Wald vor lauter Bäumen nicht. And English translated as are like you don't see the forest because of, uh, with all these trees you don't see the forest. Traducido es como uh, que no se ve el bosque con tantos árboles. So I want to invite you to try to imagine the big picture. Quiero invitarte para intentar de ver la imagen grande. So don't take just one step, but better ten steps back and imagine uh, being yourself out of space and looking down on this earth, whichever form it has in your mind. Quiero invitarte de no solo un paso, dar diez pasos atrás y imaginarte ese mundo como si estarías en el espacio mirando abajo de esta tierra tenga la forma que tenga en tu mente there are many atheists which started to believe in creationism and the bible after looking into that topic of let's talk cafe hay muchos ateístas que empezaron de creer en la teoría de la creación y en la Biblia después de estudiar el tema del hashtag Let's Talk FA. So imagine the beginning of times when God uh, and the angels, one, I think one third of part of the angels, they, they fallen angels took on his side one third of 
the angels with him. Imagínate en el principio de los tiempos, Dios y los ángeles, y el ángel caído, Lucifer, o como quieras llamar, Satan, Satan, and the devil, Diablo. Cuando él, el, el ángel caído, Lucifer, eh, atrajo a su lado, eh, me parece, un tercera parte de todos los ángeles. <ríe> me estoy refiriendo, refiriendo a ángeles, no en California, los ángeles, los, el ángel, <ríe> ya sabes lo que quiero decir. I uh, just want to mention when I was three or four years old, Solo quiero mencionar cuando tenía como tres o cuatro años. I had many nightmares almost every night. Tenía muchas pesadillas casi toda cada noche. And it was always that same kind of dream. This contrast between uh, light and dark. Or fast and slow, always these contrasts are um, in the bed, uh, very um, flat or, um, how can I explain, like, uh, oh, you know what I mean, I mean grumpfelig in German. Había siempre este contraste entre luz y oscuridad, rápido y despacio y y uh, liso y gambado, o como quieras decir, bueno, contrario de liso. Bueno, uh, creo que esto es, también un poco se refiere a la sábana cuando está un poco gambado o fuera de su sitio, que ya no esté liso, ¿comprendes? Always other words on this contrast between good and evil con otras palabras, el contraste entre el bien y el mal. Ok, long story short. Bueno, resumiendo. Anyway, I should mention that I'm very convinced that uh, there's an afterlife, after death. De todas formas, quiero mencionar que estoy muy convencida que hay uh, vida tras la muerte. And I want to remember you that it's written in the Bible that Lucifer is the highest power on this world, on this world, not the, the world later. Quiero recordar que también en algún sitio en la Biblia dice que Lucifer es el maestro de este mundo. De este mundo, no el mundo después. And I want to remember you that all, all the presidents of the countries are just puppets uh, who execute the... Um, the agenda of the world elite, which is a satanic system. Quiero recordar que nuestros presidentes de los, de los países que son solo marionetas que ejecuten la voluntad de la élite mundial que gobierna eh, en este sistema satánico. Uh, yeah, there are many uh, satanic uh, rituals. Hay muchos uh, rituales satánicos. As now I remember, um, uh, uh, did you hear of the Jesuits? Uh, Society of Jesus. Has uh, oído de los Jesuitas, Sociedad de Jesús, que hacen and they discovered under many churches um, 
buried uh, yeah, after the war, that under uh, these churches were buried a satanic signs of uh, rituals. Después de la guerra también se descubrieron debajo de las iglesias que había estos rituales satánicos. Now I want to invite you to make one thought experiment. Quiero invitaros a hacer un experimento de pensamiento. Did you see this episode of Simpsons when um, this uh, person comes who fights against it, wood eating uh, insects? Uh, ¿Has visto ese episodio de Simpson cuando um, viene esa, esa persona de empleado para luchar contra estos insectos que comen la madera? And he says, uh, to be able to fight against these animals, I must think like being one of these animals. Y dice, para poder luchar con, contra estos insectos, tengo que imaginar ser como ser uno de estos insectos. Or maybe like, um, then when they invest one crime, um, they imagine to be in the shoes of the criminal. O cuando investigan un crimen, eh, se, se imaginan de ser en los zapatos de este criminal. By the way, um, you know that I have uh, many Twitter accounts. And one of them, especially the soul confiscator catch, is like to imagine being working for United Nations. Mark of the Beast 666. Ya sabéis que tengo muchos cuentas de Twitter, entre ellos el confiscador de almas. Soul confiscator catch. Gato confiscador de almas y ahí me imagino un poco de esta manera trabajando por Naciones Unidas marca de la bestia 666 impuestos tax RFID chip radio frequency identification RF ID. So what I wanted to say, imagine being that fallen, fallen, sorry, fallen angel, Lucifer, Satan, or the devil, how you want to call it. Así que vamos a, imagínate cómo piensa este ángel caído, Lucifer, Satan. O el diablo, como quieras llamarlo. Remember when Jesus fastened and uh, um, Satan, Lucifer, or devil took Jesus in the desert and showed him all uh, the countries. Anyway, this is another um, example. How is it possible to show all the, the, the countries and the land if the end la land is round? So uh, from one corner of the, uh, of the planet. And then, actually what do I want to say? Then he said, he used the word of God to, is the, the word of God is the sword. Bueno, traducir. Quiero decir. En primer lugar, la palabra de Dios es la espada. Y también que cuando Lucifer o oh, Diablo Satan, Satan eh, tomó, eh, sí, Jesús eh, estaba ayunando estos, no, perdón, 40 días. Um, excuse me, 40, 40 days. Um, took, eh, lo ha llevado al desierto y ha enseñado a Jesús todos los países. Y, cómo, y además, sí, ¿cómo es posible? Mira. Si sí, el, el mundo 
el, la tierra es plana, así es, sí, es posible de, de, de ver todo, bueno, ver no, pero más bien probable que cuando, si sí, el, el mundo es redondo. What I actually want to say, the first interest of Lucifer, actually I like, I prefer the, the word Lucifer because it's, it's, um, The big liar. It lo like, looks like light. Anyway, apocalypses. Okay. Uh, keep it simple now. No. Eh, quiero decir, eh, eh, casi prefiero el nom nombre de Lucifer eh, que parece como luz, sí, pero es todo mentira. Yeah, what I really want to say that um, Lucifer um, likes that people doubt of the word of God, the Bible. And this way, as I said before, the word of God is the sword to fight against. So if they start to doubt of this word of God, they are They don't have defense. Quiero decir que a Lucifer le gusta que la gente deuda, que, que pone en deuda lo que dice la Biblia. Y la Biblia es la defensa que se puede luchar y defenderse. Esto es, se puede como considerar como uh, eh, juicio final. Es una lucha de palabras como en un juicio. La lucha espiritual. You can consider this like the last uh, judgment day. It's like uh, in court, you don't fight with uh, with uh, <laughs> guns. You fight with the words, like in in a trial, in a court, you fight with the words. And this, the defense is the the word of God. So. What I want to say especially, so if they doubt about this prophecy of the mark of the beast, if they doubt uh, the Bible, so they don't pay attention to the prophecy of the mark of the beast. Cuando ponen en deuda la palabra de Dios, no ponen atención lo que dice la profecía de la marca de la bestia. So now, long time, I have uh, plans to uh, produce some videos like pretending to be the soul confiscator. And accusing people of stupidity. And that's why United Nations has the right to to introduce the mark of the beast. Ya yeah, hace tiempo tengo como planeado de producir videos como uh, pretender ser el soul confiscator, confiscador de almas, gato de <laughs> cat. Así que mira, acusando a la gente estúpida porque si no conocen a la palabra de Dios no prestan atención de la a la profecía de la marca de la bestia así que Naciones Unidas tiene derecho de introducir el sistema de la marca de la bestia comprando impuestos y confiscando almas Confiscating souls. So I just came home now.